What's up guys, JV2017 here, and today I wanted to flip the script and discuss my biggest criticisms with the Fallout 4 DLC announcement. So the past five days, I've been talking about what excites me, you know, what am I excited about, what am I looking forward to with these DLC packs coming soon, but there are some fair criticisms and concerns out there that I wanted to address. Keep in mind, this isn't just for the sake of complaining. I'm sure a lot of you love the game like I do. The idea is to have a constructive discussion and conversation on what can improve for the future because Bethesda does listen to this feedback. These criticisms are a combination of what I've seen in the comments on my own videos, as well as some of my own personal thoughts on the DLC and some of the conversation I had on the latest episode of Ham Radio Podcast. If you're not familiar, it's a weekly Fallout-related podcast hosted by Mr. Matty Plays and Lone Vault Wanderer, and I was fortunate enough to be a guest on their latest episode, which was just uploaded today. So I left you guys a link in the description below that you should definitely go and check out if you want to hear me on their show, hear more of a long-form conversation on Fallout in general, and once again, big thanks to them for having me on their podcast. First, let's talk about this season pass. And if you didn't know already, Bethesda is going to increase their season pass, which is originally $30 to $50 because more content is coming out. And really the concern here is, is it really fair that they advertised the season pass on launch, the price of $30, and then decided to increase that price? And I think from a very removed objective standpoint, this is a cash for value exchange. Bethesda increased the amount of DLC coming out and as a result, the price increased to $60 or more of value. That's actually what they said. And since they're offering more content, then yeah, the season pass should cost more. Again, that's an objective point of view. But if you take it from more of a subjective perspective, it's easy to see how some people may be upset by this. So let's say you don't have the $30 right now and won't have it before the price increases on March 1st. Is it fair that you lose out on the original advertised price that they've been pushing for the last three months that was supposed to include all of the content that they were going to release and are forced to pay $20 more? Is that fair? Of course, the answer to that is up to you guys individually. I think Bethesda could have handled this situation a lot better by waiting to announce the season pass price until they at least had a rough idea of what their plans were in terms of releasing content. You know, I'm not denying that the season passes are par for the course these days. They really are. Every single AAA title seems to have one, and Bethesda follows suit. And for those people that plan on buying DLC no matter what, it saves them 10 bucks, right? It's a guarantee. But increasing the price after already advertising a lower price at $30 for three months, months, sets a very dangerous precedent for the industry, in my opinion. If EA or Ubisoft were to do this for, like, their next Battlefield or Assassin's Creed, they would never hear the end of it. And that's the truth. I love Bethesda to death, clearly, since their game has been the focus of my channel for the past three months. But this kind of practice is a little scary, and it's a legitimate concern. I just think that in the future, if Bethesda is going to do a season pass for, you know, their next Elder or scrolls game they should probably wait say we're doing a season pass but we're not sure what the content is going to be and what the extent of that will be so we're not going to give you a price or an option to even buy it until we know until we know what content we're making and season pass buying in general is a bad practice same with pre-ordering a game why are you putting money down on something that you aren't sure of you don't know what this content yet is yet and we didn't know for fallout clearly because it just got announced three months after release. And so buying the season pass in the first place doesn't make any sense. I didn't do it. I waited until now and I got it at $30. So for me, obviously, for the people that have the money, hey, this is a great deal. And if you look at it from that way, obviously, what's the problem? Why are you complaining? The problem is there's a lot of other people that don't have the money now. They're going to have to wait. And, you know, is that really fair? So I think this is a fair criticism of Bethesda. I hope they learn from this and wait to announce their DLC price or at least their season pass price. Another popular criticism I've seen on my videos is that Automatron and Wasteland Workshop are just filler cash grab DLCs before the real DLC, which would be Far Harbor, comes out in May. And I'm not really sure I can sign and get on board with this or if I agree with this, but I think this is the general perception because we don't have a lot of concrete details on either DLC pack yet. You know, we have this vague description, you know, a very short paragraph and a screenshot, and I'm sure those don't share everything that the packs have to offer. There is something to be said about having quality over quantity. You know, why couldn't they have pulled together resources to combine Automatron and Wasteland Workshop into another Far Harbor and just make that the DLC instead? We don't know the motive 
motivation behind these decisions if they're mostly business related to make money or if they're mostly you know content related to make a good product but maybe bethesda wanted to share the mechanist story and build robot companion customization around that for automatron or share the experience of having your own wasteland fight club and expanding workshop items separately they didn't want to just lump that onto a piece of dlc Maybe this is the compromise, so we don't have to wait two months in between each piece of major DLC like Far Harbor. On the other hand, maybe these DLCs only offer 10 to 5 hours worth of truly valuable content and we'll be disappointed by them. The fact is we don't know yet, and I don't think we can truly judge if these pieces are filler content or not until we've actually played them and we don't know everything about them. So I think this is a mix of the perception with not knowing enough about them. People are drawing their own conclusions because we don't know enough yet. That's partly Bethesda's fault in my opinion. And another criticism I've seen related to this past one is that I've seen people calling both DLCs cut content and saying that it could have been released with the full game. And personally, I feel like if it was cut content, it was probably already made and removed from the game. I think they could have sold it a lot sooner than four to five months after the core game's release, which is when we're going to see Automatron and, you know, Wasteland Workshop. I think we really have to draw the line somewhere on what we consider to be cut content. I mean, for example, Day One DLC provides actual content and isn't just cosmetic. If that's the case, absolutely. That's when people should grab their pitchforks and be complaining. Unless Bethesda cut this content and waited several months to release it, you know, in a very planned, strategic kind of way in the season pass, which is a pretty serious accusation, by the way, that should have, you know, really only happened if there is proof, then I don't think we can assume this. We can't just assume that they cut this from the you know, cut it off from the main game and decided to sell it for more money. Anything's possible, right? They could be doing that. We don't know. You know, I don't think Bethesda should get a free pass because I love Bethesda. But, you know, we don't know enough, I think, to make that judgment to say this is cut content or not. The last criticism I want to talk about is the idea that we have to wait until May for the, quote, real DLC to come out with Far Harbor. If you weren't aware, Far Harbor is the only traditional piece of Fallout 4 DLC announced so far. And by that, I mean it's got a new large area to explore, a main quest line, more, you know, faction interaction with the Children of Adam and a hidden group of synths, pretty much what we would expect from a Fallout DLC. I think this is the one complaint I can truly get on board with. You know, imagine if we had this large chunk of DLC with Far Harbor coming first in March, you know, right around the corner, and then Automatron and Wasteland Workshop in April and May, and then their next big chunk in June. So yeah, imagine they just move Far Harbor forward to like right around the corner, and then their next huge chunk came out after these two smaller pieces of DLCs. Ideally, that's what I would have liked to have seen them do. Clearly, that's not the direction they went in, and when it's all said and done, we will have waited six months before the first major piece of DLC for the game, which is way longer than any previous game, you know, previous Fallout game, or even Elder Scrolls, I believe. For me, I think it all depends on how Automatron and Wasteland Workshop turn out. If those are valuable experiences worth their $10 and $5, then I'm sure I'll look back on this timeline and be a little more forgiving. Because again, I, pretty, I do have a bias towards Bethesda. I really like the studio, right? They make some of my favorite games. But if these are not valuable experiences, if I feel like I got cheated out of it, then I think this criticism is pretty valid and something Bethesda should definitely plan ahead for in the future. So I'd like to hear from you guys. What are your criticisms of this DLC announcement, if any? You know, are you just fine with what they're doing or do you have a little bit of, you know, criticism to give them in order to improve the experience in the future? And also, do these issues worry you at all? These specific issues that I talked about? Let me know all of that in the comment section below. I'd like to get a nice conversation going in the comments on this video. All right, guys, today I shared some criticisms of the DLC announcement for Fallout 4. And next time we will cover more Fallout on my channel. So stay tuned for Fallout 4 tips and tricks videos. If you learned something new, remember to hit that like button. I would really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe for more DLC coverage, build guides, and general tips and tricks videos. Talk to you guys next time. Peace.